So Derek Prince has a message for you that you really need to hear. It's a five minute clip that I feel can change your life. And I know because it changed mine. It's a word for the American church and it's most likely a word for you. This message was given towards the end of his ministry and it's blunt and straightforward. Stick with me to the end because you need to hear this message. But here's a little introduction. So I want to give you an opportunity to think this over and to consider whether you need to change your ways. I'm being very frank with you. I love you. You've been wonderfully gracious to me. You've responded to my ministry. I have no complaints. I could walk away and say, bless you, praise the Lord. But I don't want to do that because I really believe God has sent me here to challenge some of you. Okay, so this message is going to be a challenge. On this channel, I'm going to be calling for major reformations in the church because I feel the status quo is not working. I want to follow in the footsteps of my heroes, Martin Luther and Martin Luther King Jr., who called for major reformations in their day. So if you're looking for a word that is always encouraging or filled with the prosperity gospel and living your best life now, maybe this channel isn't for you. Although messages should be encouraging at times, it can't always be like that. Churches have now become in the business of entertainment and we have gotten away from the gospel message and many are preaching a self-centered gospel about what God can do for you and how he can fulfill your dreams. And yes, God wants to do some things for you, but he also intends you tends for you to pay it forward and to go into all the earth spreading his message. And it encourages people who sit in the pews on Sunday to never really do anything for God. On this channel, I'm gonna cover a lot of Derek Prince because I feel like he is one of the best Bible teachers in the last hundred years. And thousands of comments have come in on my videos to confirm this. Derek Prince was one of a kind. The reasons are simple, is we need a word and a power church. Charismatic people love the power, but they've gotten away from the word. We need a faith that has the head and the heart. Many charismatic people have the heart, but many are also anti-intellectuals. The Apostle Paul was a well-educated man who used his education for God's glory. Jesus said to love him with our whole heart, mind, and soul. So we need the head and the heart. We need to have truth fully presented, but also have a graceful approach to presenting that truth, or it could come off as abusive and turn people away from the message. We need to have proclamation and preaching of the gospel, but also demonstration showing the power of God at work today. Derek Prince was all of these things in one package, and that's why he's so unique. Today on YouTube, you have all these famous preachers, and many of them are young with no experience. Now we shouldn't look down for people based on their age. God can use a five-year-old. But when you're 30 years old, like many of the YouTubers, you just don't have much experience. Derek Prince, has 50 years worth of experience. So before we get started into this clip, I wanna make thing, one thing really clear. We are not saved by works. We are saved by what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross. There is nothing that we can do to win his love, approval, and affirmation. He gives that to us for free before we do a single thing for him. At the same time, faith without works is dead. And eventually, if our faith is real, it will produce works naturally. The world has the 80-20 rule, which means that 20% of people are doing 80% of the work in the church. And in the church, it's probably much, much lower. We need to get back to empowering every single person in the body of Christ to be up to something. This message is a must needed message to the American church. This message is a much needed message to you and to me, especially to the younger generation that's on social media and has become so narcissistic. Let's get into this Derek Prince clip today that I feel is really gonna bless, with, bless you. Stick with me to the end. And I want to challenge you. I want you to ask yourself, what kind of 
righteousness of faith am I practicing? Is it just a religious kind of righteousness like the people in Isaiah's day who spent a lot of time in the temple and in religious services but ignored the fatherless and the widow? Or is it a righteousness that cares for people? I want to ask you for a moment just to consider this question. After hearing what I say, what I've said, would you say to yourself, I have to acknowledge I haven't really been practicing the kind of righteousness described in the Bible. I've been in many ways selfish and self-centered. I've cared for me and me first. I'll tell you one sure way to be frustrated is to be self-centered. You cannot be self-centered without being frustrated because there's nothing in self that will ultimately give you satisfaction. So I want to give you an opportunity to think this over and to consider whether you need to change your ways. I'm being very frank with you. I love you. I could walk away and say, bless you, praise the Lord. But I don't want to do that because I really believe God has sent me here to challenge some of you. You're Pentecostal, you're charismatic, you speak in tongues, you sing the best choruses, and you read all sorts of books or watch all sorts of videos. But what are you doing for the people who really need you? The people all around you, the poor, the homeless, the orphans, the neglected children. What are you doing? Are you doing anything? You see, I believe if the church in America would change and really act like Christians and care for the uncared for and love the unloved and go out and show love, not wait for them to come into the building. You know, most unchurched people, they have no idea what goes on inside the church. It's just a building out there. Some strange people go there every Sunday. But you go out and you begin to show love to people who have never been loved and to care for people who are not cared for. And they'll begin to want to know what makes you tick. Why are you behaving like that? I believe it could bring a great move of God to this nation. I really believe we could have a move of God in America and in Britain if we would start acting like real Christians. I hope you're not, I'm not insulting you. But that's the kind of Christianity that I read about in the New Testament. It's the kind of faith that I read about all through the Bible. It's a faith that cares. It's a faith that loves. It's a faith that does something. Do something. Now this is a wonderful church and many of you are doing something tremendous. But many of you are not. And I want to give you an opportunity to make one simple decision. The decision is, I'll do something. I'll put my faith into action. I'll care for those that are not cared for. I'll show love to the unloved. I'll provide for the homeless and the needy. Out of my own pocket, I'll even offer some of them a place in my home to sleep in that nice bed of mine, which I've kept so clean. I say to Americans many times, we have two idols in the American church, comfort and convenience. And they dictate to us much of what we do. If it suits me, if it's convenient, if I enjoy it, I'll do it. I want to suggest to you the message of John the Baptist. You need to repent. You need to change your mind. You need to change the way you think. You need to change. That you would make a decision. You know, repentance is a decision. It's not an emotion. The decision is, I'll be a real Christian. I'll do what the Bible teaches. I will care for the orphan and the widow. I will feed the hungry. I will take the homeless into my home. Exactly what Jesus said, exactly what John the Baptist said. God has not changed his mind. He's exactly the same today. I want to be a real committed Christian practicing the New Testament righteousness. I want to care for the uncared. I want to reach out to the lonely and the hurting. And I'm sorry for the people that are leading an easy life with no challenges and no sacrifices. I'm sorry for them. You don't know what you're missing. So if you are here this evening and you sense that God has been speaking to you, maybe you came here almost without planning it or intending it, but you say what that man has been saying is real. It's true. Christianity is not just sitting in a church seat. It's not just singing a few nice hymns. It's caring for the uncared for, looking for the lost, preaching to the unreached. It's not enough just to give a book or a Bible. You have to give a love. You have to give a hug. I want to say, <laughs> I've said it too many times, I want to say again, do something, somebody. But the best thing I can do for you is confront you with the truth. 
It's just a real sobering message that I feel that we needed to hear. And I could title this, Do Something, Somebody. Go out and do something. Christianity is not about sitting in a pew and singing some songs and listening to a message. It's about going out and doing something. Churches now have become in the business of entertainment. And we preach self-centered gospel message of what God can do for you and how God can fulfill your dreams. But yet there's very little going out into the world. Jesus' great commission was go into all the earth and preach the gospel, making disciples of nations. In many ways, parenting people that are broken, lost, and don't have anything. Go out and do something. But in modern day church, it encourages people to sit in the pews on Sunday, sing a few songs, but never do anything for God. And I don't know about you, but I'm done with this type of church. Something happened during the pandemic that just switched in my soul. And I was at a regular church at that particular time, and they had me cleaning the bathroom. And it was like God spoke to my heart and said, Josh, I, I appreciate your humility and what you're doing right now, but I'm not calling you to do this. Go out into the earth. I have a message for you. I have a work for you to do. I want you to start your own ministry. I want you to go out and do something. I want you to push back against the darkness that's out there in the world. I want you to push back against the narrative. I want you to begin to preach and teach and start a ministry, ministry that will go out into the world and will reach millions of people. And I'm done with the type of church where one person sits up in front of the room and they're the experts while hundreds are just sitting there taking it in. I'm calling for an end to traditional church. Four songs, a sermon, communion, and an offering. You're in and out one, one hour and 15 minutes. We need to enter into the era of the church where the average person is empowered to go out into the world where everyone is raised to and trained to be in full-time ministry or have a lifestyle Christianity. I am going to a network of house churches, and we do not do traditional churches. Each church looks completely different, and many times we don't even have a sermon, although we do study God's Word. Our main worship services are outside in Times Square, the church is built upon the proclamation of the gospel and the demonstration of the power of the gospel in public places. The gospel message isn't just for us. It's a gift that needs to be shared with the world. It's about going out and doing something. It's to do what Jesus did. So my challenge to you today is what are you doing with your life? What are you doing for others? Have you been following the American gospel focused on what God can do for you to fulfill your dreams? I believe God has placed in every person's heart something that he wants you to do for the kingdom, something unique that only you can do for the world. And I want to challenge you today to find your outward purpose in this world. And that doesn't always mean feeding the homeless, something dramatic like that, or standing on a street corner preaching. Many times it's something practical. For some, it will be in the area of the arts, painting and drawing, acting, singing, dancing. For some, it will be politics and running for political office. For some, it will be the business world and making money for the kingdom to sow back into the kingdom. A lot can be done by writing checks. For some, it'll be starting a small ministry right where you're at. I have a friend of mine that made thousands of sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches that he hands to the homeless on his way to work in Manhattan. Some of you will not be in full-time ministry. Actually, probably only 1% of people are called to be in full-time ministry and to be a pastor. 99% of the people watching this video will not be in full-time ministry. Go out and do something. Don't just live for yourself. Don't just live for what you want. 
This life was meant for something so much more than ourselves. And like Derek Prince said, when we, when we constantly are focused on ourselves, when we're preoccupied with ourselves, it leads to misery because there's nothing good in the human heart. Besides being in full-time ministry and teaching all over the world, Derek Prince adopted 12 orphans. And that's what he did. That's the main area of impact that he had on a personal level. Let's just listen real quick to a minute clip on his family. Now, you could say to me, well, Brother Prince, what have you done about it? So I'm going to tell you very briefly what I've done. I'm not boasting. I make no special claims, but I have cared for the orphans and the poor and the widows. So I am a father to 12 children, 11 girls and one boy. I forgot to mention that Lydia and I adopted a little black African girl when we were in Kenya. Well, let's start the other end. I want one boy who's Jewish. I've got one little African girl who's black. I've got one Arab who's a Palestinian Arab. I've got one English and all the rest are Jewish. I am a head of a family that contains more than 150 persons. And I was an only child with no brothers or sisters. He is a wonderful God, isn't he? And we are a united family. So you see, Derek decided to care for the orphans, him and his wife. And they had over a dozen orphans that they took care of. And God flourished that family and blessed them to be over 150 members. And just think about that, 150 people that they raised up with a gospel worldview, with a Christian worldview that are now going to go out into the earth and do something for God. That's a tremendous accomplishment. Forget about what he's done in the ministry. Think about what he's done with his family, sending out. Now his family includes over 150 people that are going out into the world and doing phenomenal things for God. So before we close here today, some of you do not have the ability to do much. And there are stages in our life where we're just not able to do much. We're tied up with a young child or we're working full-time job with a side hustle. But if you're tied up in the business world, right? Then you can use some of the money that you have to support the kingdom work. Okay. And that's, that's underrated in today's time that some people just only have the ability to bless a ministry financially without money. You can't do anything for God. I just wanted to take this time out to thank Billy Amore, a monthly supporter of this ministry on Patreon. He gives $5 a month to help support this ministry and the work I'm doing. If you're interested, you can look in the video description. I am spreading the gospel message on social media, in many ways, a social media missionary, because many will never step foot in a church. So I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and now I have a new podcast on Spotify. So you could find information about those things in the video description if you're interested. And I have two other YouTube channels, one for politics and news to help promote biblical values and fight the cultural wars. And another, another YouTube channel just for focusing on evangelism and apologetics, spreading the gospel. I do street ministry with my pastor here in New York City and eventually looking to start a 24 seven house of prayer here in New York City. I'm also in the process of writing two books, but I'm limited in what I can do due to financial restraints. So if you're interested in supporting this ministry, either as a monthly partner or a one time offering, you can look in the video description. But for today, I wanted to leave you with something. This is not about money. I wanted to leave you with the idea of this sermon. Go out and do something. Christianity is not about sitting in a pew and singing some songs. Christianity is about going out into the world to do something, something that you were born to do, a purpose, something that God wants you to do for his kingdom to go out there and make a difference. Hope this video blessed you today. Be blessed.